Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you and, and we ask that you would take us in all our messy selves, take us with all our warts and all, take us and use us for your glory. Let us live to honor you and to bring forth your kingdom into the world as we work and play, as we enjoy all that you have given us. Lord, just let us, let us live for you holy for you. And so, Lord, we're asking you to let us hear your word right now and let it take root in our lives and, and praise you always. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now we're going to see. There's a lot of book bags behind me and I get animated sometimes and you never know where I'm going to fall and when that's going to happen. But anyway, uh, well, aren't these wonderful? All these book bags, it's just wonderful. God be praised. God be praised. Okay, so the song we just sang, Take My Life and Let It Be. Great song, isn't it? It's, it's very simplistic, simple. It's not simplistic, it's very simple. It was written in 1874 by uh, Frances Havigal, and she was the youngest child of a Church um, of England minister. And she, um, she was frail, and she didn't have very good health, but she began reading and memorizing the Bible at the age of four, can you imagine? And at, by the age of seven, she wrote her first poems. Now we need to remember, because most of the songs that we've done have been from the mid to the late 1800s, where um, the lyrics tended to be poems first, published poems, and then somebody sets them to, to a tune. Well, anyway, so that at the age of seven, she's writing poetry. And throughout her life, she was dedicated to serving the Lord and to bringing others to know uh, the Lord as her Savior. And for, and for others, yet others, to seek to go deeper uh, in the spiritual journey of faith. And she died at the age of 43, very young. She wrote several songs, several hymns, um, but anyway, she lived a very simple life, honoring God. She was faithful and confident in her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, throughout her short time, her, throughout her short life. And so today's hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, seems to cover every aspect of surrendering to the Lord, of being consecrated to the Lord. It really feels like a prayer, doesn't it? Take my life, Lord. Take it. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet, Lord. So it's really a, uh, not just a poem, but a prayer for us as we sing it, petitioning the Lord to take my life, take my silver on my bowl, take my moments and my days, take my hands, my feet, my voice, my lips, take my intellect, take my will, take myself. Twelve items in that hymn that we are surrendering to God and asking God to take it and make it holy, consecrated. Lord, take it all, take it all, and co consecrate it for you. Now, consecration means to make holy, to dedicate. You know, we consecrate ground uh, for the building of 9-11, and um, the, the, uh, out in Pennsylvania, that ground after 9-11 was made whole, uh, consecrated, set apart, set apart. Uh, it's made holy, set apart as holy. So this hymn talks about us surrendering to God, surrendering all that we have, and asking God to make it holy, consecrated, make it holy, set it apart, set apart all of us, our entire being, all that we are, set it apart. So then it is holy, and therefore works for the glory of God as we live. And so the first, uh, to set apart all that God has first given us, our time, our talents, our possessions. Make them holy, Lord. Take my hands, my feet, my voice, my possessions. Take everything that I am, all that I am. Set it apart for you, God. Set it apart for your sake in the world. Not just to make us holy for our sakes, but so that the world is influenced by our holiness and it points to and brings glory to God. So we are singing, we are saying to the Lord, 
And listen to the, to the list I came up with, and maybe you can add to it. Take my mind, take my heart, take my emotions, take my will, take my attitude, take my behavior, take my resources, Lord, take my time, take my talents, take my calendar, take my relation, relationships, take my profession or my employment, take my vocation, take my skills, take my family, take my cultural background, take my finances, take my plans, take my priorities, take my service, take my lifestyle. Set it all apart. Let it be wholly yours. And so we are asking God to help us to yield all of that list and so much more to his will and to his ways. From the first reading from Romans 12. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give yourselves to God as a living sacrifice, holy sacrifice. Don't be like the world. Don't copy the behavior and the customs and the attitudes of the world, but let God transform you into a new person, a new person to honor him and bring glory to him. So we're asking God to transform us, to make holy our entire being. And so we ask God to consecrate us, to give up our claims on ourselves, and give ourselves to the Lord. We put ourselves completely in God's hands. Before we seek to be consecrated, our life was for our own use, really. As we ask God to set apart our lives, our lives no longer come become for our own use or our, or our own satisfaction. In consecration of our lives, we live for him, we live in him, and we live with him. We are saying, Lord Jesus, I am for you. I am no longer for myself. I'm no longer for the world or anything else. I am wholly yours to impact and influence the world for your sake. We are a generation. We are a generation in which Christ is simply a part of our lives. But we need to be a people that puts Christ at the center of everything we do and say and are about. Take my life, Lord. Take my heart. Take my love. We live in a time when the most we are called to give God is an hour, hour and a half, some churches two hours, um, to spend with God. Or uh, we feel as if we need to give God a little time on a Sunday morning or in service to him, a little bit here and there, bringing in the book bags. And we say, God, Take this part of my life. Take this part of my life and keep, and I, I'll keep the rest for what I want to do and what I want to be about. For most of us, giving God everything that we are about isn't even on our radar screen, is it? Yet Jesus says to us, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus in the gospel for today says to several people, I want you to follow me. And those people had excuses. And he's saying, I want you to give up your excuses. It's now or never. Don't look back. Don't look back. Just plow ahead. Don't look back. Don't have your excuses. Jesus in the gospel today is saying, you know, I don't have any place to live, so if you're intending to follow me, you're not going to be at the Hilton Hotel. You're going to be out in the bushes, you're going to be under a tree, you may be invited to someone else's house. Then he says, you know, to the other one, well, you know, the other one's got to bury his father. And he's saying, hey, listen, there's, the time is now. Make a commitment now to follow me. And the other one says, you know, uh, I, I got to say goodbye to my family. No, the time is now. 
Jesus is saying. You make a decision to follow me. There's no compromising. You and I are either sold out to Jesus Christ or not. Think about it. Think about this. Jesus Christ was beaten to the point of death. He was barely conscious. He was barely recognizable. He was nailed to a cross. He took the punishment and the shame for our sins upon him. Hello, God. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know if you heard the phone here. <laughs> the King of Kings, the King of Kings, willingly left his heavenly home and his throne in heaven. He gave it all up in the singing of the angels. He gave it all up to become a human being. The one who is truly worthy to be served is the one who came to serve humanity, to serve you and me. He was beaten, he was bruised, he was broken, he, his skin was torn on his back, and he was bleeding, and he hung on a cross, and he died for you and me. All of this he willingly submitted to so that we would have a relationship with his Father of Heaven, that we would have a relationship once again with God, that we would come to know God's power and presence in our lives and his, his great grace in our living and the gift of eternal life, salvation. If Jesus did all of this for us, taking on to himself all of the sins of the whole world for all generations, taking what we deserve upon himself, isn't he worth every ounce of our passion, of our time, of our talents, of our possessions, of our energy? Isn't he worthy of that? The very least Christ deserves is the very best that we can give him in this world. And so as we commit ourselves to Jesus Christ, as we seek consecration, a setting apart of all that we are about, we will experience the fullness of his power, his presence, his abundant life. So this great hymn, this great hymn, as simple as it seems, is a prayer that brings to mind and keeps us mindful of our need to have God Take all that we are and set it apart. Consecrate it all. Make it holy for him. So let's learn. Let's learn. Let's strive to yield our days. Let's strive. Let's learn. Let's take that walk of faith, of surrendering to the Lord of surrendering, surrendering and asking him to consecrate our body, our attitudes, our actions, our eyes, our tongue, our ears, our family, our friends, our relationships, our time and talents, the gifts, the future, the pleasures, the problems, the pain, to consecrate the past, to consecrate our schedules, to consecrate our health, to consecrate our uncertainties. Have God make holy our uncertainties. For God to make holy our opportunities, our image, our reputation, our responsibilities, our passions, our life, our love. Make consecrate it all to God. To the Lord, yielded, consecrated. Because a life that is consecrated to the Lord is blessed with a transformed mind and a transformed heart to understand God's way, to understand God's will more and more, better and better, richer and richer, deeper and deeper. Because a life that is consecrated to the Lord is blessed with the fruit of the Spirit. And we talked about that a, a few months ago. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, 
faithfulness, self-control. Ask God to consecrate, to make you holy, to yield to him, because then we know the blessing of an ever-growing victory over anything life can throw at us, because God is in the midst of it with us. All our problems, our pressures, our pain, our turmoil, our tragedy, God will walk with us and make it holy. That means that it will unfold in the ways of God. And because a life is consecrated to the Lord, yielded to the Lord, it is a life which is blessed. We are blessed with an ever-growing wonder at the God moments in our lives. We started God moments years and years and years ago. And the stories that you share with one another, that you share with me, that people talk about, I just had someone tell me last night about a God moment, you know, and God moments are all throughout our nation. We are blessed when we dedicate our lives, when we ask God to make our lives holy, our thoughts become so holy that we see God in action. We see God's presence all around us. A life that is consecrated to the Lord enjoys an ever-growing ease and peace and joy of living for Jesus Christ, walking the, in the ways of the Lord and living righteously, rightly, living lives that honor God. It becomes joyful. It becomes an ease to do it. And it becomes a peace in our lives. Take my life. Let it be consecrated for you, Lord. Take my life. Set it apart. Made holy for you, Lord. Take my love, Lord. Take my heart. Take myself. And I will be, the last verse, I will be forever only all for you. What a prayer song. Maybe you could memorize that, and that could be your prayer for your living. Heavenly Father, in awe and wonder we come to you this day, and we thank you for being our God, our Lord, for having the very best in mind for us, as we trust that, Lord, that you have come to give us the abundant life we can trust and live for you more and more. More deeply, more richly, more powerfully, we live for you. And we influence the world, and Lord, we need to do that. So take my life that I might be consecrated, Lord, to you. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow. In ceaseless praise to you, take my hands and let them move at the impulse of your love. Let my hands be your love working in the world. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for you. Let my feet walk and, and take me to places where I can influence others and touch others. Take my voice and, and let me sing always and only for you are our king lord take my lips so that i might speak speak words of comfort and hope speak words of the messages of who you are take my silver and my gold take all that i have lord it's been given to me by you take my possessions lord and bless them, set them apart to be consecrated and holy, made holy, so that they may be used for your glory. Take my intellect and, and use my mind, my brain, to speak, to teach, to influence for the sake of the gospel. Take my will and shape it, shape it so it is your will, Lord. Take my heart. It is your heart living in me. Take my love 
I pour it out, Lord. I pour it out to you and I pour it out to those around me. And take myself and I will be ever and only all for thee. That is our prayer today, Lord. That is our prayer for you to live within us. Heavenly Father, we also pray for those who are ill or hospitalized, for those who are in need of your healing touch, especially we pray.